Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing well and feeling good. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the case of Maddox Lawrence. Maddox Lawrence's parents' names are Ryan Lawrence and Morgan Lawrence. Something about Ryan reminds me of Chris for some reason. I think it has to do with an interview, an interview I'm going to show y'all at the end of this video. So make sure y'all stay to the end so y'all see this video. Now I'm going to do like I always do with these cases. I'm going to tell y'all the full story, the best of my ability from very public information that is already out there. And then at the end, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on what I think happened or why I think things happened. So let's just start at the beginning. Ryan Lawrence was 24 years old from Syracuse, New York. Ryan excelled in art in high school and he was a great student. He even got honorable mention. Ryan's mother passed away at 17 years old from cancer, but her job was a victim's advocate. So she was probably a pretty good human and she was known to love her kids very much. Ryan had one sibling and was said to be like a quiet, more lonely student. I saw comments on YouTube videos from people that went to school with him and said that he was just kind of like there. He was quiet, more reserved, but always very kind. Now after high school, Ryan job hopped quite a bit. Like he went from job to job, which is pretty normal for somebody getting out of high school. He went on to get a job working at the mall. And this is where he met a young woman named Morgan. After graduating high school, Morgan got a job working in the mall. And then her and Ryan would spend a lot of time together. They went hiking together. They went out and got food together. They were pretty much inseparable. Everywhere that you saw Morgan, you would see Ryan. And when you would see Ryan, you would see Morgan. And then before you know it, Morgan turned up pregnant. Now they were both excited, but also scared at the same time. I mean, they both worked at the mall and they did not make a lot of money at the jobs that they were working at. And so they were concerned, but they knew that with the strength of their family, that they could do it and that they would be fine. It didn't take long for them to find out that they were having a little girl and they were so excited. I mean, Morgan had a few sisters herself and she was so close to her mother. She was a daddy's girl too, but I mean, she grew up in a home around girls and now she was getting ready to have a little girl of her own. When their precious baby girl came into the world, they named her Maddox, a happy, precious little baby who was surrounded by so much love. She had ants doting over her at all times. She had her grandma and her grandpa on her mom's side. She had an uncle on her dad's side. She grew quickly and was known by people around her as a daddy's girl. Yes, Maddox loved her daddy, Ryan. And everybody around her said that Ryan doted over his little baby girl, Maddox, and he loved being a daddy. Now, as Maddox continued to grow, they noticed that one of her eyes was changing colors. It was getting darker. And so they got nervous and they took her to the hospital. When they took her to the hospital and the doctors checked her out, they quickly realized that she had a retinal cancer, which is a cancer in part of her eye. The diagnosis of cancer was for retinoblastoma. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And she was diagnosed right before her first birthday. So she was still so little, but it did not stop her from smiling and being full 
full of life. The three of them would spend many months traveling back and forth to a hospital in New York City so Maddox could receive the treatments, including chemotherapy. It was very expensive for Ryan and Morgan and a huge time commitment. Because of this, they weren't really able to work full time and earn a decent income. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, Liquid IV. Liquid IV is a delicious tasting electrolyte drink mix that is perfect for keeping you hydrated. Now, you know I'm always telling y'all to drink y'all's water and I absolutely mean it. Hydration is a huge key to so many different parts of your health, like your immune system, your kidney function, your skin health. Y'all can use all the expensive face creams that you want to, but if you're not staying hydrated, that skin is going to shrivel up like a raisin. I'm trying to tell you. But with Liquid IV's Hydration Multiplier, you can stay hydrated faster and way more tastier than just drinking water alone. I always have Liquid IV with me in my laptop bag, in my purse, definitely on my carry-on bag on an airplane because if you guys fly at all or travel in vehicles, it dehydrates you. The cold air dehydrates you, salty foods dehydrate you, all kinds of things dehydrate you and you may not even realize that you are dehydrated, but if you use liquid IV, you can be hydrated much quicker. You guys, it is so delicious. I am trying to tell you, I was always a lemon lime lover and now I am all about this grape and this passion fruit. Ugh, so delicious. If you want to try Liquid IV, all you gotta do is click the link down in the description box or use my code Christina Randall and you will get 20% off plus free shipping. Yes, just click the link down in the description box or use my code Christina Randall and you will save money and get free shipping today. Thanks again, Liquid IV. And so their family set up a GoFundMe for them so they could try to raise money for the treatments. They did end up raising about $9,000, I think over like a hundred donors. The $9,000 was very helpful for them, but they still had so much pressure and stress on them. She ended up going through four different chemo treatments and you guys can only imagine like how hard that was. She was still so happy. She smiled, she ran outside and played when she could, when she had the energy to. It was very hard on her though because she could not eat a lot of the times like if she was going to have her chemo treatment. You know babies when they wake up in the morning they want to eat or they want something to drink. They don't understand no you can't eat until after you have your chemo treatment and so those things were stressful on not only Maddox but also her parents but she got through it. She loved being with her family and there were even people that said that Ryan had this like morning time job where he would deliver pastries to businesses and he would never leave Maddox in the car because a lot of those times Maddox's mom Morgan had to go to work. So she would go to work with her daddy Ryan and he wouldn't leave her in the car. He would get out of the car and he would put the pastries under one arm and he would put little baby Maddox on his hip and under his other arm and he would go walking up to the doors and all of these people would always see like how happy she was and how much she loved her daddy and how much he just loved bringing her to work and like showing off his baby girl and although they were going through this with the cancer everything seemed good until February 20th of 2016 this is the day that everything changed for Ryan for Morgan for baby Maddox and for everybody in the community. Morgan was working at a clothing store and because they shared a vehicle, it was very normal for Ryan to drop her off at work and then to go on about their day. This was routine for them. Ryan and Maddox would drop Morgan off at work, she would work and then they would pick her up later that evening. But on February 20th, they never showed up to pick her up. So as Morgan's standing there looking like, okay, where's my baby girl? Where's my husband at? This is not like them. She thought, okay, maybe he's late. And so the fact that they hadn't showed up to pick her up was just really bizarre to her. She hadn't argued with her husband. There was you know, nothing that she knew was wrong with her baby girl, why they wouldn't show up. Now, as Morgan is standing there looking, seeing, you know, looking in the parking lot, one of her coworkers came over to her and said, hey, I saw y'all's car over there parked in the parking lot. 
Morgan is like, what? Okay, maybe they're in it. So she goes over there to the car. Nobody's in the car. She opens up the car door and she sees that the keys are in there. So she's like, what in the world? So she gets in the car and she finds a note. Now the note that Ryan had left for Morgan in the car with the keys suggested that he may hurt himself. So she obviously panicked, freaked out, and drove home as quickly as she could. When Morgan got home, frantic, looking for, you know, calling out, looking for Ryan, looking for her baby girl, she ended up finding an eight-minute video. In the eight-minute video, Ryan would go on to say that he was basically either going to hurt himself or hurt her. He was not coming back. And of course, Morgan panicked. I cannot imagine you guys. Can you imagine? This is her husband. Okay. She went to work like a regular day. She is working and posting pictures of him on social media, probably on the Facebook, you know, Oh, I love him. He's amazing. He don't come to get her from work. They were not arguing. They were not fighting. She said that they, she thought that they had a wonderful marriage. So this was completely out of left field. And now she done found a note and now she gets to the house and she finds a video. And now she's panicking about her baby girl who has already been through so much. So she called 911. She called the police. So they come over to investigate and an Amber Alert was released for baby Maddox and she was reported as a missing and endangered child. The next day on the 21st, there was a press conference that was held and this is when Morgan Lawrence pleaded for her daughter's safe return. Please just bring Maddox home. Maddox, I love, I love you, honey. Um, Ryan, please, just please call. We just want to know that the both of you are safe. Um, the whole family loves you. The whole family wants you both home. And, um, we just want to know that you guys are in a good place. And, um, we'd love to see you both as soon as possible. Thank you, man. Uh, give me one second. I'll take some questions if you have that. With desperation in her voice, you can hear that she is just begging for like, you know, telling him, hey, we miss you too. We're worried about both of you. But you know she had to be thinking like, I know he's not going to do nothing to our baby. Gut-wrenching. I bet you she didn't sleep a wink. I bet you she couldn't eat. She couldn't drink. And then the next day, on February 22nd, the police were able to locate Ryan. A bystander had spotted him walking down the road. He was wearing a disguise, but the bystander still recognized him from the Amber Alert. He had on a wig, a hat, and sunglasses. Y'all have to be confused, right? Just like I'm sure Morgan was. You got the doting father, doing all this stuff, taking his baby girl to work. Next thing you know, baby girl is missing and they are finding him walking down the road with a doggone wig on and a hat. How? When Ryan was brought in for questioning, he was uncooperative. Police said at first he gave a couple different stories about where Maddox was. He even said at one point that she was with a couple of his friends. Investigators said it took us a long time to get him to admit and be truthful about how he hurt her and what he did with her body. On February 23rd, after 18 hours of questioning, Ryan told the investigators where they could find Maddox's body. When investigators arrived to the location that Ryan had given them, they found a blonde haired, blue eyed little baby who had been beaten, beaten horrifically. But that's not all. She had also been burned and buried in a watery grave. After an autopsy, they were able to confirm that it was the body of little baby Maddox. It was determined that Ryan took her to a secluded area in Cortland County and beat her with a wooden baseball bat, y'all. Can you, ooh. And then afterwards, he burnt her in a fire pit. His little baby girl who loved her daddy, who fought through cancer. Then he took her back to Onadaga, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. He put her in a yellow plastic bag and tied it to a cinder block and then dumped her off of this harbor area where the water was so she would sink. 
unreal, guys. Police say that he gave multiple different reasons to why he did it, but none of them made sense anyways. And I just can't, imagine. first of all, I can't imagine any of this, okay? Any of it. But, the, you know, just everything from, from the situation coming completely out of left field, truly, okay? From him even doing this, like, oh my gosh. Then the cops finding her, then him in a disguise. Like what happened? At first, Ryan was charged with second degree murder, but he had to complete a couple mental evaluations and he tried, allegedly, to, to act like he was insane or something, but they found him competent to stand trial. And I wish, you know, we talk about this all the time. Like people think that they can play crazy and it's gonna get them out of something. Like, it don't matter if you're crazy. We all crazy, okay? We all got a little crazy in us. Did you know right from wrong? Obviously you did. You had on a wig and sunglasses and you tried to, to bury her. You knew what you was doing. Oh my gosh, it's just so, it's so beyond infuriating. During the examinations though, he admitted after he took her life that he had planned to be on the run for a while and then he would just end it all by either starvation or an infection or by succumbing to some of those elements. This too made no sense because he was traveling with a backpack with survival gear in it. Like he was really gonna go on the run and survive in something. Ryan admitted to having two wigs, makeup, a bandana. Like he planned this y'all. He had manuals on how to survive and how to avoid capture. He even had a can of spray paint to change the color of his skin y'all. I don't know what video game dream world this man thought he was in, but it's unbelievable. He had camping gear. He had little snacks in that bag. He had a mosquito tent. Like he really planned this out. It is so sad. Ryan then would say that he needed all that stuff to survive long enough to get to the Ohio River where he hoped his body would float all the way down to the Caribbean where his mother's ashes were spread in 2008. And like I said, they deemed him mentally competent to stay on trial. And when they did, they went ahead and upped his charges to first degree murder, which is like, thank you. I mean, it's pretty obvious that it was premeditated. Investigators also say that Morgan, Maddox's mother had no knowledge or involvement in her daughter's passing. She was absolutely devastated as any mother would be. Statements made by Ryan have investigators believing that Ryan was jealous, y'all, of the attention that he was getting from his baby girl because she had cancer and getting treatments. Now he denies that and I'm gonna show y'all a video here at the end. I would, I could do a whole video just reacting to it. If y'all would have seen me when I watched it, ooh, okay, I'm trying to stay on track here. But there are a lot of people that believe that it had to do with him being jealous. Now Ryan's attorney said it had nothing to do with jealousy, but we'll get there. In September, Ryan went ahead and took a plea deal and pled guilty. And his attorney said that he was extremely remorseful. I'm gonna let y'all be the judge of that at the end too. It's making me hot just thinking about this. His attorney said that he was torn apart. He was so upset and he was regretful of what he had did and all the people that he hurt and that his life would be changed forever. But as a part of the deal for Ryan to plead guilty, he will be eligible for parole in 25 years, which is crazy. But I think the reason why they did that was to spare the family from having to go through everything. And I'm not exactly sure what the max sentences are or if there is even a death penalty in New York. Y'all let me know down below. I don't think that there is. Y'all let me know down below. But nevertheless, he took the plea deal so he could be eligible for parole in 25 years. Now at his sentencing, his in-laws or ex-in-laws, which are Morgan's parents, they came up to give their statement first and it is so emotional, but I, it, it's a lot. But when Morgan came up to give her statement, y'all, she has got to be one of the strongest women I've ever seen because she looked right at him and she was shaking. Her hands were shaking. I'm dumbfounded by the audacity of his to make such an uneducated decision on behalf of everyone in Maddox's life. Any one of our family members or friends would have gladly taken her from you if you had just told her that you were feeling you were going to harm her. Okay. 
His completely irrational actions have left me with no answers or closure. Brian has not only taken my daughter away, but also abandoned me as well, leaving me with feelings of extreme loneliness and sadness. The situation also leaves me questioning my own judgment of others' intentions and their character. Burying my daughter alone was the single most hollowing experience I've ever endured. Knowing that her death was at the hands of a man that I once loved and trusted with our lives, shakes me to the core because of what Ryan has done. I can never again be sure that I know someone for who they truly are. Ryan Lawrence's actions have affected the lives of others as well. Maddox was loved by everyone she met. She was strong and inspiring. She's missed greatly by everyone who knew her. And those who are very close to her, such as our family, and her heartbroken and outreach. I want her to be known for who she was, and I want to be known for the loving mom and wife that I truly was. As a result of Brian's actions, I, I need for him to spend the rest of his lifetime in prison. I fear for my safety, and I fear for the safety of, safety of others who back into the community. He's deceived everyone in his life with ease. And he's betrayed all of us with his actions. He's charismatic and believable when he wants to manipulate a situation in his favor. Before a parole board, parole board 25 years from now, he may seem remorseful. He may beg and plead to be released. He may claim to be changed. Please don't be fooled. He's a monster. And I truly do believe he'll kill again if given the chance. Don't give him that chance. <sighs> this is the most horrible thing I've ever endured in my life. But I want you to know, you will not drag me down. I will rise above this and honor my daughter in my own life. You took Maddox's only chance at life, Ryan. And therefore, you don't deserve another chance at your own. I don't even know if I could have been that close to him or in the same room with him. This was her husband. She loved him. She thought that this, she literally said in her victim's impact statement, he was the love of my life. She went to work like a normal day. And, and, and he had been planning this. For him to collect all them items, he already had it planned when he kissed her goodbye for work that day. And another thing that she said in there that really got me was how she was talking about how she, basically saying she can't trust people. Like she's looking at everybody now. Can you imagine that as a mother? Ryan would make a statement as well. Y'all check this out. Talk about this for many reasons. And he was hard to find the words to explain such a horrible crime. It's with all of my heart that I convey my sincerest apology to everyone for taking Maddox from her family and everyone who loved her. I'm also utterly sorry for denying Maddox her chance at life. I can't expect your forgiveness, but I tell you now that the sorrow I feel for what I've done is complete and comes from the deepest depths of my being. This sorrow I feel has nothing to me. Nothing to do with being in jail, but for the pain, for the loss of Maddox. I miss her so bad. Max is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'd say that to her all the time, and to anyone else who'd listen. It was amazing to have her everywhere I went, including all the times I brought her to work with me. When our baby was diagnosed with cancer, we were in shock, but hopeful that the doctors in New York City would cure her, as indeed they did. 
even after enduring countless overnight trips to the hospital and fruitless attempts at soothing a baby who couldn't possibly understand why she couldn't eat for hours before invasive, invasive treatment procedures. The threat of her cancer returning was very real. Our work schedules were arranged so that one of us was always with the baby, but there was very little time for the three of us together, nor enough money for a sitter or much of anything else. Still, we treated her and fed her better than we did ourselves, and loved her far more than anything else we've ever known. In no way can I justify my actions, and there is no one to blame but myself. There is no good explanation for such a horrendous crime, and regret is too simple a term to describe what I feel. What I can say is I've never felt such strong emotions towards anything in my life than my ever-growing and unconditional love for Max, and now I'm completely distraught by overwhelming grief and anguish for what I've done. I was never jealous of my daughter. Both our families know I love Max. If anything, I only wanted more for her. Max was always at the top of my list, and is constantly, to this day, the focal point of my thoughts and actions since she first came into my life. I'll never overcome this feeling of loss, but I will spend the rest of my life trying to figure out how I got to such a dark, irrational state. I found his statement very disingenuous, and I'm still going to show y'all this interview here at the end. I did not. I, You know what I think that they should have done, y'all? I think they should have had all the families leave the room and let him give that statement and see. Because to me, the way he was doing it was like a little, like he, he was doing it to try to make himself seem like something. He makes my skin crawl, you guys. But the judge, he made it very clear that he thought that Ryan should spend the rest of his life in prison. Mr. Lawrence, based upon the totality of the facts and circumstances of this case, it's my opinion you deserve to spend the rest of your life in prison for what you have done. Well, I may not be around in 25 years from now. If I am, I will be asked for my opinion. And I will give it in terms of your parole. However, if I'm not, my words will, are in this record and my expressed opinions regarding your punishment will live on. And it's crazy because he got two life sentences, but because of the laws there, they had to run them concurrent, meaning they had to run them together versus consecutive back to back. And I know that had to be physically painful for that judge because he could get out in 25 years, which is wild. I'm telling you what, if he was in Florida, honey, they'd have put him under the jail. It was revealed by investigators that Ryan had actually done a dry run of the crime right before he did it. He practiced it. Oh my gosh, you guys. The community was shocked as you guys can only imagine. And like I said, I've seen, I've watched some of these interviews of him on YouTube and I've gone down in the comment sections. And when y'all are done watching this video, y'all can check my description box if you want to, you know, see some of the videos that I've seen. And in the comment section, there's people commenting that went to school with him that were shocked about this. People even built a memorial for Maddox where they left candles, teddy bears, and other little things along the creek. They even put up a memorial Facebook page. Now, Ryan did this interview from prison, y'all. Oh my gosh. You better, if y'all are, y'all better sit down because y'all about to have steam coming out your ears. Well, maybe you won't, but I did. I was, ugh. He talks mostly about himself during this interview. Ryan's saying he would do anything. He would do anything to take it or anything to, you know, make the family feel better or to take their pain away. And then the interview asks him, would you do this? And wait until you see his response. I would do anything to take their pain away. I never intended to put them in this. <sighs> would you go as far as to say, I vow to never put, go up for parole? If that's what, something they would, they, they would be glad, that would make them at least feel a little better. <sighs> I mean, you could do that. Yeah, I guess I could. But I, um... I 
I don't know. I just feel so bad. I feel bad for them, and I feel bad for my family also. My dad and my sisters. They want to see me get out. I don't think I'll ever heal from this. But you wouldn't be willing to go that far. I guess not. Yeah. He won't do that. That is one thing I can say about Chris Watts, you guys. He went in. He did his sentence. You know, whatever. Now, there's been some chatter and some rumors since he's been in there that he may be trying to do this, that, or whatnot. Still don't know if it's him or his family. It doesn't matter. You know, he's, he needs to be in there for the rest of his life. But this guy is literally trying to gain sympathy and be the victim. He, he, he literally blamed everything in this video other than really himself. He don't know why he did it. It was this, it was that, this is not him. You guys, he beat that baby with a baseball bat. Okay, we're not talking about, and none of it is okay. We're not talking about so many other things. None of them are okay. But that baby was probably looking up at him. That baby loved her daddy. What kind of anger and, and hatred do you have to have inside of you to hit your baby with a baseball bat? That baby had been through cancer treatments and all that had been fighting for her life since the day she was born with a smile on her face. What kind of sick evil do you have to be? Oh, it makes me so upset. Now Maddox original GoFundMe did end up raising $35,000 to help with funeral expenses and stuff for the mom, but it doesn't matter. $10 million, $20 million, $100 million will never bring that baby girl back. And as a mother, you guys know the sleepless nights when your baby is sick. I mean, you know, seeing my son with a toothache, you know, like, made me feel so helpless and devastated. I can't imagine watching your baby go through chemo treatment like that. And some of y'all have been there, so you know. And, and you feel so helpless. You just want to do everything to, to help your baby and give them the best shot of, at life. And for him to do that, disgusting, disgusting. What do y'all think? Let me know down below. Sorry I'm not ending this one with a smile. This one just, mm-mm-mm. Let me know what you guys think down below. I love you guys. I hope y'all have a good weekend. <sighs> love y'all. Be nice. <clears throat> love y'all. Bye. <laughs>